Hey there, friends. Have you ever been to an industry-specific trade show? Today on the Creative Shop Talk podcast, I've invited Darren Stern to join us. Darren's the vice president of Colmuster Inc., which is a an international trade fair. That's all they do. <laughs> so good at it. He has two decades of serving thousands of companies reach global markets. What does that mean for us? <laughs> He's had the pleasure of working with nonprofit organizations to help suppliers and buyers connect to build their business. That's where we are going to be really focusing in today. How can you go to a trade show and find all of your buyers and what does it mean and what does that look like? We are going to be talking a little bit about h and America today, which is a trade show for anyone in, um, in the, who is making a living with crafts of any kind. It's happening in Chicago this year. Uh, they had one last year. This is the second one in Chicago. It happens in Germany uh, regularly, but it's, they've brought it to North America. It's a huge opportunity for those of you who are in the craft industry. I'm just going to leave it there and we'll talk more with Darren about that. It's happening June 21st to the 23rd and I'm excited to share that I have been asked to be a featured speaker and guest during the event so pretty excited about that and I know we have a lot of creatives listening and industry uh, you know listening to uh, to us today and if you're in that industry and in the creative business. And I think even if you're not, I'm sure you're gonna have some takeaways today for what to look for in your own industry trade shows. This is a biggie. You know, I'm excited and nervous to be, have, have been asked to come to this trade show. Um, and I hope you'll come. <laughs> I hope you'll come and, and cheer me on. This is, I always love seeing friendly faces when I'm there. So um, they're also, h and America and Darren actually have um, offered to give free exhibit hall passes to our listeners. Um, we will have the discount code in the show notes. It's CST23. Registration opens on March 15th. And I'm like super hoping you're all going to come. <laughs> So I'm also going to be hosting while we're there. I'm going to be hosting a retailer meetup. If you're on my email list and if you're not, why not? But listen to the podcast here and join my email list and I will keep you in the loop. We are going to be doing something and I'm just trying to put all that together for June and I'm really excited and I hope that you will be there. And I've never been to Chicago. Friends, tell me, you know, hook me up check connect with me on dms and my instagram at wendy batten biz let me know what do i need to do in chicago i'm going to be there for several days and i'm really excited to visit all right so let's get on with the show i hope you find this really helpful let's talk to darren he's going to share some really great information about what to look for when you're attending trade shows and what opportunities are there and we'll be talking about h and h americas and what that looks like and what that could that experience could be like for you and i hope to see you there at h and h americas in chicago all right let's get on with the show let's say hi to darren Running a retail business doesn't have to be so hard. Welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, the go-to podcast for creative shop owners, studio owners, and independent retailers. I'm your host, Wendy Batten, retail business coach and mentor. Each week, I'll share simple proven business strategies, inspiring stories from fellow retailers and advice from industry experts. Together, we're gonna to work to find the success you want from your retail business with more profits in your till and a little more joy in your life. So retailers, today I have a special guest for you today. We're gonna to be chatting with Darren Stern. So welcome to the Creative Shop Talk podcast, Darren. Thank you so much for having me on today. It's an absolute pleasure. Great. Before we jump in, I was wondering if you could just give us a little rundown of who you are, what do you do, and who do you serve? Well, thank you. So again, my name is Darren Stern. I serve as the show director for the H&H &H America show. We're going into our second year hosting the event in North America. It's going to be in the outside of the Chicago area at the Rosemont Exhibition Center, about five minutes from the airport. The show is a brand extension of a long-running show in Cologne, Germany called h, h Cologne that has been operating for 15 plus years, servicing the soft crafts industry exclusively in Europe. Um, and then it kind of became the global platform for the soft craft shows, for the soft craft industries. 
but we're a little bit different here in North America, like we always are. Uh, and we service the saw craft industries and the general crafting industries. So from yarn, knitting, crocheting, weaving, and then over to scrapbooking, decorative painting, regular painting, pencils, you need, you know, heat transfer materials, all of those kinds of things are all represented. So it's the kind of the complete sourcing for everything you need from a professional maker to a retail store, to an e-commerce store, to being a educator as well. Yeah, it's fantastic. And thank you for for explaining all that because I invited you on, I invited Darren on to explain to our retailers a couple of things about trade shows. So Darren's an expert with trade shows when it comes to trade shows. And this trade show in particular, I think is a very big missing link. And we have a lot of listeners, uh, link meaning something that's been missing in, in the North America market, in my opinion, uh, and being in the creative world myself for many, many years. And a lot of our listeners run shops that have a creative component to it or, you know, are doing workshops, studio owners. We have a lot of different listeners. Why can you tell us why attending a trade show is important for the general, for a retailer? Why not just scroll online? And find some suppliers online. This is why I wanted to bring you on because I I believe highly in trade shows. So can you chat a little bit about the H and H Americas and why it's important? Absolutely. And I hope as I my eyes kind of roll in my head for people if you are watching this on video, to the idea of why do we still have retail? We're human beings, bottom line, right? You can look all day at red yarn online or red paint online. Uh -huh. And is it red? Is it rouge? Is it rose? I don't know what is it, and is it soft? Is it textured? Oh, look, it's magnet paint. Very hard to understand, feel, and appreciate what those items are when you're just looking digital. Digital is a great way to source items to kind of begin the ex exploration. But when you're looking at a wholesale level, it's less of an impulse buy, and it's more of a business decision. What does this mean to my bottom line? What kind of margins can I make on this? Are there import issues? Are there safety issues, depending on the type of product that it is, right? You might have certain kinds of paints that might have some safety concerns if you're still dealing with old school lead paints, right? Uh, those types of ideas where you just want those relationships. If you're looking to find an item or types of supplies that not every store across Canada or across the United States has, you're looking for something unique and new and trying to find international companies and you want to build those relationships, it goes back to being human. We like that human interaction. We like to be able to touch and feel and explain and hear the story about products, which you can do on a much greater scale. When you visit, if you think about the time it would take you to visit 230 companies and be able to see products, scan products, maybe touch some of those products, you couldn't. it would be mind-numbing of how long that would take you. Where at a trade show for 48 hours, right? You got two days, or if you're going to spend all three days with us, we are a three-day show. You can lock up and down and see over 300 vendors, up to 300 vendors, 250 vendors in that range. How many items? I couldn't even tell you how many each one carries. And just so quickly ramp up the bandwidth of what you're looking to, to purchase or what you can even just think about sourcing. Yeah, I, I agree. And to just, you know, one thing to pull out from what you just said, when we attend trade shows, we see, and, and yours in particular, I'm excited about, this is the second year in North for North America um, in person, right? It's the second year that we're doing. Yeah. Right. And just to be able to see <laughs> what's happening and, and be able to speak to the experts, I think this, the networking and the relationship building and the visual aspect of it is so visually meaning walking into those, you know, those wholesalers and just being able to speak to people and what's coming and what's trending and what's hot and what's, what are people attracted to? What, you know, what displays are being done? It's just, to me, that is a really big bonus. Even if you're just walking around, you know, just walking around and taking it all in, it's a really valuable part. And those relationships, let's talk about the relationships you can build. I'm a big believer that our businesses, our small businesses are built on the relationships, the quality of the relationships that we have with our customers, with fellow shop owners, with 
the people we buy from, the, the people they buy from. And all of that can take place under the roof of a trade show, which I think is pretty cool. Like, well, pretty cool. You do things a little bit differently as well, too, from a lot of the traditional trade shows uh, that are happening, uh, especially in the U.S. And one of those things is there's an education and seminar at aspect to it as well, too, which I think is a little bit different to a lot of trade shows. Can you speak a little bit to that? Yeah, and comparative to some of the other events that have been in the space in America, we're the types of classes that you can get, there's, as I stumble on my words, because there's so many different things to do. So let me back up a second here. So the program has a couple different components. We have a master class series that are long form, hands-on, small classroom, almost consulting hour style classes. It's a two and a half hour spectrum. That's going to take place the day before the show opens because those classes take longer. We will then have paid business classes where we're not really teaching demonstrations and technique like how do you do this knitting process or how do you do sizing of uh, patterns or inclusive sizing of patterns. We chose this year from the feedback from our first year is people wanted junior and senior level business classes. How do I improve my business? I don't need to know how to knit. I own a knitting store. I knit. Like, good. Thank you very much. I can do that. Even to some of the more simple things of like how to teach an online Zoom class. We can all get better at it. But again, we've figured out Zoom over the last two and a half years. And so we've tried to really ratchet up the quality and the things that so that you're investing in yourself, investing in your business. So it's more than just finding products. It's about, I want my business to be around five years from now. I want it to be around 10 years from now, or where can I see the next level of growth? Most businesses have figured out some level of e-commerce, but there's maybe there's a new channel of it. Maybe it's a new product mix. Maybe you're a yarn store and you want to bring in some small quilting projects because people, crafters are crafters. A knitting, a quilt store that says, huh, there's a little cool crochet kit. Let me bring that into my store. Because again, you can only, you need to take sometimes mental breaks from the project that you're on to but yet you're still a crafter, so you want to do something. Then we also have on-floor free classes that are usually panel discussions, fireside chats that is kind of thought leadership kinds of positions. We have keynote speakers each day. We have meetups being scheduled that are led by people from the industry, like a designer meetup, a retailer meetup. So you have a chance to just talk to fellow shop owners and fellow people who live in agony of wanting to grow their business and do better every day. Uh, so there's those types of things. And then we're going to have some, and then we will have some demo zones on the floor where there will be physical technique being shown. And um, so, and have an opportunity to see a little more hands on the on kind of procedure. And then always on top of all that, you'll have 230 booths who are all doing and showing something in their booth. If you, where if you want to learn to knit and you want to try needles, we'll go to one of our companies that supply needles and I'm sure they got a sample set there that you can practice with and see how it works. Yeah, I, I heard last year so funny. And just as so everybody knows, I, you know, I appreciate I've been asked to come and join. I want it to be in that room last year. When I started hearing, I heard a few podcast episodes that were recorded there live during your roundtables, the fireside chats. I had a lot of my clients that were in attendance last year as well, too. So I thank you for, I've been invited to, to do a few classes. We're also going to probably do a retailers meetup that will have those details ready and, and the classes that I'll be teaching. But the thing is, I wanted to be part of that room. I wanted to be in that room because I think what you're doing and what you're, how you're supporting retailers, uh, creative retailers has been phenomenal. So I wanted to, to say that I think that's pretty cool how you're doing that and investing in our businesses, you know, it's uh, to get, to get out of our shops get out of our every day, go, you know, it, it, it's a lot, right? It's a lot, it's a lot of investment of time away from our shops, a lot of investment in getting to Chicago because it's taking place in Chicago. It's a, an investment in being brave sometimes for those introverts that are listening, even those that are shop owners, but they might be safe in the four walls of their shop. It's a little bit scary sometimes going into these big trade shows. And I want people, I want my retailers listening to know that, you know, this, there's, there's other people that feel the same in the room in that big arena or big conference center that will feel the same. And, you know, there, there's people like you there is what I'm trying to say. Do you have any tips for those introverts in the group that might be 
hesitant to take that step to get out of their shop and to invest into doing this? Do you have any tips about that, Darren? Well, the first comment that came to my mind was like, I remember my mother telling me, remember my grandmother telling me, I tell my 11 year old, and my 14 year old, don't eavesdrop, right? Mind your own business. Stay out of <laughs> someone else's business. In this scenario, no, open those ears. Because as you stand in a booth, stand next to a booth, wait to talk to someone, it's you will hear someone talking about their store and you'll be like, oh my God, I've had the same problem. I'm not alone. I was in a local quilt shop with my daughter a few weeks ago, Quilters Heaven here in Northbrook, Illinois. And I was eavesdropping on these ladies and she was asking about something from Tula Pink and asking about a machine in the shop. Um, she wasn't the owner. She was an employee at the store, didn't actually know who that designer was and didn't really know the question. And there was some fabric introduced at a show in October. And here I am, I turn around and start in the whole conversation. I thought these two ladies were going to lose their mind. They're like, what does this dad have any idea what this conversation was? But yeah. they accepted me right in. But it was the idea of just eavesdropping. And then it was it made it very easy to join the conversation where I would have been relatively this outsider bun from gender. It just was really weirdly placed. So that it, you really just have to kind of listen. And you'll quickly figure out that everyone's just like you, whether they're scared, they're timid. Even the most boisterous person still probably is timid. And again, you all have the same common base. You all love what you do. You all are in an industry of passion, an industry of interest, an industry that doesn't have go home at five o'clock. It's the go home at five and let me start my next project. And that's where it's very, it's very interesting. It's a very, very good cohort of individuals that are very open. It's a very uplifting group of people. And whatever universe you think is scary, then make the universe smaller. Then say, hey, I want to look for people from my state, my town, my product segment, my country. Um, and then we do have digital products that will be part of our show. We will be opening our, our it's going to be an online digital community uh, that is open to everyone, whether you attend or not. Certain features are locked to attendees. Other features are open to everyone, but you'll be able to network in advance. So you can look through the database and make like a LinkedIn friend request and say, hey, I see you're coming from my town. Can you be my friend? Let's go get a coffee. You know, I literally had one of, I've had someone ask me, do you mind if I fly with you to Germany? And I'm like, no, here's my flight. Cause they were afraid of how to get through the German airport and all. And I'm like, no, oh, I get it. I do it a lot. It's, it could be scary, but it's really not, but come with me. We'll walk together. Don't ask me how they had the aisle seat. I had the window seat, <laughs> small world, but, they, but it made them feel that much more comfortable. And it was, okay just to ask. Yeah, that's funny. One of my very first trade shows. And, you know, again, we have to be brave. We're business owners. You know, even if we feel like the small business owner, one of my first trade shows, I didn't know what I was doing. And for many of you know, I live in a smaller area in Canada and I was going to Atlanta. One of the first uh, times I was heading to Atlanta. So it was a little bit, you know, intimidating. But one of I, prior to going, had connected and made some, um, you know, some connections with people I didn't know, but through, you know, through different sources, through different groups and whatnot with people on their way. And we were all sort of arriving at the airport, same story. We were arriving at the airport around the same time. And I'm like, okay, let's share a car into, you know, and we were going into Buckhead and it's just funny, you know, you, then that was at least one person I knew, you know, <laughs> kind of one person. And we had a few, you know, you make relationships and that's how the magic happens. And I, and I, I guess, I guess I want to get that out to everybody listening about attending trade shows in general, whether it's this trade show or any trade show, really the value comes from talking to the other retailers. There's so much value in, again, knowing you're not alone. And I want to encourage you, I will be there the whole time. And I don't know anybody. I know some retailers going, but I don't know anybody. So look me up. Let's have lunch together and coffee. And like to, to what Darren said, you know, we'll, we'll navigate. We'll navigate the 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 space together for sure. And I just think that the benefits and the investment outweigh any fear and any and you know, oh, I don't know if I should go or not. The the incredible conversations that happen again, the relationships you built with vendors. It I can't. I cannot stress how important that is sometimes to be able to know that if so and so from certain, you know, you've maybe you've been buying them from them for years and to actually meet, you know, so and so who's and a lot of the, um, 
you know, the, the head, your buyers will be there, you know, your, your, they'll all be there and you can see their new products, touch them uh, back to what Darren said. Again, you can touch, feel, see just what we tell people to do in our stores and our brick and mortar versus, you know, online stores. It's just such an important part of what we do and how we sell is by being passionate about the products and being passionate about the products, I think starts in discovering them and finding them and knowing where they come from and who's selling them and the story behind them. And all of that happens at trade shows. And I, I, I really do think that's a, a big thing and a benefit. Another benefit I just wanted to share is that you don't, we don't know what we don't know. And when we're in our own little world, you don't know who you're going to discover, who you're going to speak to. And I, and I, Darren I, and I were talking about this, I think in, in a previous conversation, but you just don't know where that's going to lead to. I mean, who's going to be there and they might make suggestions like, have you tried this paint? Have you tried, you know, have, have you ever heard of this? Have you ever, you know, and you just get introduced to things you might not be aware of and in, in your world, in your sphere, in your, you know, in your, uh, your everyday. This is why I always want to encourage you to get out of your everyday. So Darren, can you give us some details again on the dates um, of, of when, when everything's happening, just so everybody can. Sure. And just, uh, just really quick, there are other places where you can just talk to peers and find out like, is this the right thing for me? Is places like the Craft Industry Alliance, right? They have a forum, if you're a member, that is very active where there's a lot of people asking for supportive ideas or if you have your own little retail group on Facebook that some, there's a lot of private Facebook groups for different a lot of different segments, just say, hey, I'm thinking of going. Who else is thinking of going? You might be surprised that there are many other people there or just because you asked and then five other people might say, oh, maybe I will go. Let's go together. Um, and then, yes, waiting in line at the bathroom and waiting in line at Starbucks, you can meet a lot of fun, interesting people. <laughs> so just have, again, that ease dropping and listening. Um, and to the part about finding products or finding the stories, being able to speak to the creator originally, uh -huh. seeing companies from 15, to, excuse me, from 20 different nations and hearing the story about why they launched that product line. Right. When it into the launch of it, that really gives you that story to separate what you're offering and how you now may sell and what you're doing in your own local shop. Uh, the event will run June 21st to 23rd, 2023, coming up shortly. Tickets will go on sale March 15th on our website, hh-americas.com. You can find us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, all of the above. You can find us and connect with us and connect with others that are in those communities as well. As I said, also the the master classes will be on June 20th. That's fantastic. So that is fantastic. I think that's, I think it's a really great trade show that we all should be paying attention to. Thank you for mentioning the Craft Alliance. I think what Abby and her group are doing as well. And again, you can reach out, reach out to me on Instagram and ask me, tell me when you're coming and look me up. <laughs> Let's hook up and, and we'll, we will probably be organizing something as well too. I'm hoping to do a meetup. Uh, Darren has graciously offered you know, a, a space for us to meet up. So we'll have details of that as well too, for you as well. Thank you, Darren, for being here. I appreciate, I appreciate your time sharing this. I really appreciate you coming on. I always have rapid fire questions for my guests here on the Creative Shop Talk podcast. So I'm going to throw some rapid fire. I'm going to throw a different one at you. So tell us if we are in Chicago, what is the greatest thing to do other than the trade show? One thing? Okay, well, give us a couple. What what should we do if we're there in <laughs> Chicago? That is a wonderful question. And it's like, it just so depends on your personality. Uh, like one thing I did with one, with my older daughter, we went on a fun donut tour. And there's a walking donut tour in downtown Chicago that you can go visit like five or six different small, unique donut shops. Like that's just fun. I mean, how many cities pretty much in the world have a sand beach downtown, right? It's June. It, what's nice about the timing of our, our event, depending on families and stores. I mean, it's hard when you're a retailer, right? You got your store to operate. We recognize that. But if you have this opportunity to get away and invest in yourself and your business, if you can take that extra day, like we're about 35 to 45 minutes on the train to get to downtown Chicago. And then you have one of the premier museums in, in America. You have first rate theater. You have the sand beach downtown you've got some crazy museums like there's a museum of surgical instruments kind of nutty 
but hey, it's something to do. Yeah. Uh, you know, so there's, and there, you know, if you want to talk about food in Chicago, you want to talk about comedy, uh, it's just a, you know, it's the second city for a reason, right? Like it's just not New York. It's a little easier, a little kinder, a little cheaper to get around, but we have as, as many three-star Michelin chefs as most major cities, if that's your thing. Uh, on our website, if you're into knitting, we have a yarn store where you can kind of go self-guided and just check out what other retailers are doing here. And there's some suburban ones. So if you want to see a suburban format versus an urban format, so there's kind of a combination of both. If you're a sports fan, people last year went and caught a White Sox game. I mean, there are Chicago Cubs. It's Even if you're not a baseball fan, it's an iconic place to sit outside with friends, gather in community, have a little food and drink, and just truly enjoy yourself. That's fantastic. That's a great answer. You should be working for the tourism board. And I have already figured out, I have an extra, I have book, I've blocked in a day, an extra day. I'm going to Chicago. I'm going to go, go visit some retailers, but I'm so adding the donut tour. on. <laughs> that sounds like a great plan. I think that would be so much fun. And I don't know, why not, right? <laughs> why not? So why not? That's, you know, that's fantastic. Put on the for us to consume. Yeah. Thanks, Darren. Anything else to share as we wrap up? Anything else you to share with my retailers? Where can we find you and find information out about you and your beautiful trade show? Again, visit hnh-americas.com. You'll find my direct contact information on there, our phone numbers on there. And I would say as we are going to extend the special offer to all of your listeners, uh, please put in your show notes, uh, check them out. There's going to be a special discount code for everyone to get free access to the exhibit floor. And so that way you can check. So we're going to move even one more barrier of why I can't come to the store today. That's even, you know, that's even one more thing. It's a $55 value of savings for you to just make it slightly even easier for you to attend. Well, that's a no brainer in my opinion. So thank you very much. Our listeners appreciate that. And again, looking forward to meeting up with you and your team, your amazing team and uh, retailers that will be attending. So I can't wait to get to Chicago now. I'm waiting for June now. So it's wonderful. So thank you very much for being here, Darren. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time today. Well, that's it for this week's episode of the Creative Shop Talk podcast. I'm so glad that you're here to join us this week, and I hope you found value in what we're sharing here. I want to remind you that our website has all of the show notes. You can find it at wendybatten.com slash podcast. Everything that you need to hear about today's podcast is there. Also an opportunity if you need to reach out to me. If I can support you in any way whatsoever, please feel free to reach out. So thanks for joining us. Please leave a review, subscribe if you can, and never miss an episode. We hope to see you back here again next week. Thanks, my friend. Have a great week.